I'll just do it so, just in yeah, case. Quit being so selfish. All right. Um. Welcome everybody to episode two of the Bevan reads the Bible podcast. I think where we last left off was John four. We made it to John four. So, That's correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So um. Do I, I get to start off? Yeah, I think if you want, dude. Oh, what? Hold on. Hold on. I need to. Bro, Sorry, I had, to, I had to kill this moth. There's a little moth. Bro, I had to take he's, a pee yeah. break. Did you Sorry. say I have to no, he's feel dead. a moth? No, I had to kill this moth. There was a little moth oh. that was chilling. Bro, see, you're starting off this Bible reading with killing God's creation. Great. Well, God's creation was annoying me, so. Oh, it's just a little <laughs> bug, bro. Bro, bug. can you admit, though, all other bugs suck, but moths are chill, bro. Um, not when they eat all your dry food storage and eat out your clothes. Moths bro, are actually pests, tr- bro. Bro, treat them like another homie, dog. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to kill just, them on site. Bro, they just crash in for the night, bro. Let them eat. Dude, <laughs> let them eat. No, just <laughs> let them eat all of your food. Doesn't matter. Well, that's, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay, man. So, yeah, they're okay. Free, so, they're freeloader creation. Literally, bro. A bunch of pests. All right. As most bugs are. So I do I um have the honors to start, Mister uh, Jenny. You know what? I'll allow you to, since you asked. It's the the funniest part is I could have started free willingly. Well, right. Jesus yeah, and the oh my gosh, and I'm already getting interrupted. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Jesus Wait, and the, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is this oh. is we are in John four. John 4. John now, 4 hey, now you can read. Thank you, Mr. Jesus and the woman of Sama- Samaria. Samaria. Yep. Samaria. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sakar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired out of sorry, Jesus tired out by his journey was sitting by the well. It was about noon. All right. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. In parentheses. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? All this is a callback to, uh, we read this in the Old Testament. When he we did. The well. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I'll pick up. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. (gasps) And the one... Okay, so I was still reading... Oh, dude, sorry. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the, the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming 
and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. It's so funny because he's always like can, trying to like explain to everybody like, guys, I'm, I'm, you're speaking to the Messiah. Like if you yeah. knew who you're speaking to, bro, like he, he slowly reveals himself though. Like yeah. he's not super direct. He kind of lets people figure it out. Yeah. Um, but we can keep going and we can reflect on this after we yeah, kind of yeah. finish that. Okay, so 27. Yeah. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already re- receiving wages, oh, sorry, receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the sayings holds true: one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Okay. So, um... Yeah, any thoughts? My... I guess I can speak about how, yeah, so Samaritans and Jews are kind of in conflict, I guess. Um, they're just two different yeah, what, tribes. What would you define the Samaritans as? I don't, I don't really know too much, but I just know that they're different. Either yeah, I just know they're like tri- a clan, right? Or whatever. Like, they're different tribes or nations or something like that. Yeah, just like yeah. how there's Canaanites and Jesusites or whatever. And yeah. like, you know what I mean? And they're all kind of in their own little groups. But yeah, so all Jesus reveals that. Weird. Yeah, the freaks, right? Yeah. So right. Jesus is revealing that obviously the woman's past here and that, you know, her past sins and basically, you know, tells her that there's this living water that will um, fulfill anyone that drinks of it Mm -hmm. and they will never thirst again. But obviously he's talking about spiritually the, the, the woman asks like, like, let me, let me see this water. So I'd never have to draw water back here, but it's not in the physical sense. Um, He's always speaking in metaphors. Right. And the metaphor here is that, you know, the, okay, actually I just, this actually makes a lot more sense. So reading this, you know how – so, Evan, we were reading the Old Testament, right? And when you sinned, um, you just like – if you committed atrocities against God, you would always have to go back um, into a confessional and, and, and you know, like you, you would always have to sacrifice something, right, um, yep. to, to God and, and to the priest and everything. So that's, the, that's what the, the Jews practiced and that was basically – their uh what's the word for it um shoot it's the the bonding word um take your time bro uh, i don't really know what you're talking about uh bonding? sorry i'm just trying to think of it like when they made they made a covenant covenant sorry oh yeah that was covenant. their co- that was their covenant with god the father okay right. that they would have to sacrifice things 
if they ever did wrong or or went against his law and it would basically patch up the the past scars but now when Jesus entered the world he knows that everyone can't keep the law they just can't so he has to come into the world and sacrifice himself for all and that one action that the passion of the crucifixion and everything and the resurrection ends all sin past present and future sins for us all so the woman when she's drawing water out and has to keep coming to the well that was like trying to practice the old law oh. and and now when jesus comes into into the situation now she 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 won't have to she yeah, she can trust in him she has right yeah it's everlasting uh a covenant with Christ. So, oh, cool. Um, I just, yeah, I just literally just yeah, thought about cool, that. Yeah, that's a cool, like, little metaphor there. I didn't even catch yeah. that. Yeah. That's so, awesome. There's, yeah, there's that's a lot of metaphors that we come across that I don't catch. You you explain them pretty well, though. That's my take, though. I don't know if that's correct. It, like, that is, was... I think that's a good take. I okay. Think that sounds right. Um, All right. You have so any other are... thoughts on that? Uh, not, not really. Yeah. Not so far. Okay. So, let's uh, so... finish up John 4, shall we? Yes, we should. Okay, are we on 43? Yep. Is it right. me or you? Uh, it's me. Okay. All right, Jesus returns to Galilee. When the two days were over, he went from that place to Galilee, for Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. Oh, yeah, we, we read about that in the uh, previous books. Mm -hmm. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen him, or seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival. For they too had gone to the festival. Oh, okay, it's me. Yeah. Um, Jesus heals an official son. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal off or sorry, official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As the... As the Sorry, as he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he, be he began to recover. And they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. And there you go. Should we kind of clear up the air? Because it, um, I know if people are like first timers of listening or reading the Bible and they hear his slaves, should we, should we mention oh, wait. that? Yeah. When did it say that? Hold on. So it, it said, um, should I come down and go? Your son will live. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So, Who's basically, slaves? the official. Yeah, okay. it was the the official slave. Yeah, slavery so, was it, it worked a little differently. Back it then. worked a lot differently. It was more like um, indentured than, servitude. Right. So it was like a seven year ser uh, servitude. Um, so it, the way slavery worked was if you could, if you didn't have enough. Um, money to it, it's basically bankruptcy um, yep. if you couldn't pay um, the person you owed you could willingly um, serve them for seven years to pay off your debt but also it's just like right. there was also different ways for using it so obviously they didn't have prisons back then and if oh, you yeah. were a criminal then you could have been a slave for seven years as well and there's also a lot of um, um, what's the word? Uh, there's con or there's pros to it because it's not like these people, uh, the the owners or uh, uh, the ones that 
you know, yeah, have to like own the slaves. Completely dehumanized, right? Right. And that's the yeah. thing. I think a lot of people, you know, misconstrue that with uh, the U.S. like recent. Yeah, that uh, was terrible. Uh, that was, a, that was way different. Yeah. Than, than these yeah, ancient they, traditions. They used the freaking Bible as an excuse to do that. Right. Which is, uh, and which is terrible. Yeah. And slavery was just a lot different. Like these people. Did you know that like after their seven year um, servitude, they could have they, they could will willingly stay in the family if they want to you know oh, like yeah. they if they could stay and and if when they are released um back into society to do whatever they want um the person the owner basically has to you know give them supplies to to start out on their own so that they're not just like thrown back into society with nothing mm -hmm. so they can either choose to stay or um to go in on on their own with you know a decent start starting you know what I mean yeah and do little tricks do little tricks and you know tomfoolery and stuff so yeah just want to nice. clear the air there that it is it was a lot yeah. different than thank recent you Ben slavery thank you all okay. right so that was uh, John four now we're on to John five yep um Jesus heals on the Sabbath so let's uh, let's get it started. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called, in Hebrew, Beth Zatha, Beth Zatha, yeah, which was which has five porticos. I don't know what porticos are. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for forty-eight years. Thirty-eight, sorry. When Jesus saw him lying there. And knew that he had been there a long time. He said to him, "Do you want me to make? Do you want to be made well?" The sick man answered him, "Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me." Jesus said to him, "Stand up, take your mat, and walk." At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Okay, me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. Uh, uh, uh. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had dis disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore, so that, any, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is still working, and I am still working. And also, and sorry, oh my goodness, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. Uh oh, so you can see how Jesus was uh, stepping on a lot of toes, calling himself the uh, the Messiah, essentially. Yeah. Um, they all they all want the Messiah to come, but when he comes, they just don't believe it. Yep. Should we explain the Sabbath? Yeah, I mean the Sabbath is just kind of like their holy day, which was right. uh, established in like Old Testament law. Which and it it it, it originates around. from the seventh day that God rested um, when He was creating the world. That's correct. Um, but He did that. God obviously doesn't need rest. He's God. Um, but he, knows he that did do. that intentionally. Yeah. For, for us. Cause he knows, um, he knows that we can't always be working. We need so some sort true. of rest. So true. Um, and that's the thing when it was, um, incorporated into the Israelites, uh, lifestyle. Um, remember, uh, back in Moses time when they were, uh, ruled by the Egyptians they got out of slavery and were basically enforced to follow the Sabbath because when they were under slavery, they couldn't 
uh, they didn't have any breaks, right? So they were they were constantly working, um, and yeah. this was just a new holy day to serve God, but also to you know have a rest. Right, right. right. So, so there you go. there's the Sabbath. All right. So um, where were we? Is it, uh, You're nineteen, 19. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or wait, am I? I don't know. I forget. I think. I think I'm. I think. Ready. I think it's yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The authority of the sun. Jesus said to them, "Very truly, I tell you, the sun can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise." The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me, has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out, those who have got, done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I'm dead. I'm dead, bro. I'm dead. So yeah, he's, they're um, just saying like, you know, Jesus is, uh, is equal, pretty much. Jesus is... If you love the Son, you love the Father. And if you love the Spirit, you love the Father and the Son. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always going to be, like, that's that the thing. transfer. Yeah, like, Jesus, the thing is, is that Jesus, it, if, thing, if, he was, if he was to talk about himself the whole time, uh, then yeah. the Jewish people would be... Would be like okay, oh, are we? So are we? Yeah. They, they they would think that they're he's talking about a new God, but he always points, points back, back to the Father, right. right? And because they know the Father, so when when he always points back to the Father, then he then he kind of re reiterates that okay, when you talk to the Father, you're also talking to me, and when you're talking to me, you're talking to the Father. So, um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, right. there was something right. I was going to say about, uh, I don't remember for, uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Let me do all the talking, okay. dog. Oh, I'm sorry. So man. funny, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not even funny, actually. You stupid. No, no, no. I didn't mean, oh my God. Why did I say that during the Bible? Dude. Why did I, I don't know. Why did I say that? Bro, that's messed up. Okay. You go ahead. All right. Is it? Witnesses to Jesus, buddy. You sure it's my turn? It's your I turn, dog. You're, I guess you're right. I just said, I just said condemnation. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, witnesses to Jesus. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. There it is. He's pointing back to God. Yeah, this is Jesus talking. If I testify about myself, my testif my testimony is not true. Did you just read ahead? No, you're just I actually did. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given to me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has... The Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him who am, whom he has sent. Ooh, yeah, right. you Jewish people. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell him, bro. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. 
and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. Mm. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the, the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Oh, that's so cool. Hmm. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Oh, cool. We'll call that back cool. to Moses there. That is crazy. Moses is so cool. I love Moses. I do too, bro. Oh. I like this beard. Yeah, I, I liked his beard when they showed love when he, I love when he has, like, crumbs in his beard. What? It's so funny to, like, pick <laughs> him out. Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> so we are at John 6 John now. John 6 now. Um, oh, dude, we forgot to, like, preface the whole thing by saying we're in the NRSV. We should probably oh, yeah. do that every episode. Yeah, we so should. people know. We are in new Revised Standard Version, everyone. That's right. Um, the Catholic use translation or yeah. whatever okay so um feeding the five thousand yeah. all right after this jesus went to the other side of the sea of galilee also called the sea of tiberius a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples now the passover the festival of jews was near when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew that he was going what he was going to do. Philip what? An- so <laughs> Philip cool. answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. I love how it mentions like the grass. Like, <laughs> Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, oh, he gave thanks. Hey, give thanks before your meal. He distributed them <laughs> to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told us, the disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people That's saw crazy. that the sign he had done, or saw the sign he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So cool. Like, whenever uh, he gets big like that, he just says, like, he just, like, either leaves or he says, tell no one about this. Yeah. That is, that's crazy, bro. That's, cool. that's just such a classic story. Classic. Feeding man. feeding the 5,000. But I'm, it, it's cool man. that John mentions that he he asked him. Um, Dude, John where puts it to... in a way that, like, reveres him so much. Right. He's like, like, he's like so where cool. are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And he said this to test them. Like, that's so cool that he yeah, mentions yeah. that. John adds, like, little sidebar commentary, like, yeah, and he had done this in this way to, like, do this. Right. right. Like, you, that's you, so you, cool because you don't see that in other books. Right. You don't see that in different books because, like, those are – you always forget that those are different people. Like, they have different styles of writing. Yeah. Like, that sounds like John is, like, including, like, more bigger picture, like, commentary. It's really cool. Right. That is cool. Too bad you guys um, don't know because we didn't cover those books. So. See, that's – you know why maybe he's adding more um, side notes like that? Because he was the one that grew old. He was the only one – apostle that wasn't martyred he went to he went to the island remember to to write revelation so i wonder if he had more time to include things like that because the other apostles died for their faith at you know in in their middle-aged 
uh, you know what I mean? That's like so when cool. they're right? yeah, if you guys they're like forty like, or something. Up, like the other eleven apostles, except for like Judas, because yeah. he like what did he do? Kill himself or something? Yeah, they replaced Judas with uh, whoever with Dias, the heck it was. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the other apostles like got martyred for their beliefs. And martyr me- meaning like killed. they died for their faith. Yeah, they killed. Got killed. They got murdered for their faith, bro. They got um, gunned okay. down by their ops, bro. Yeah, bro, those ops, the dog. Ops, we gotta, we we gotta, gotta slide them. back. No, we don't. We have to forgive and love them. Oh, dude. Oh, did you remember? Silly me. All right. Jesus walks on the water. Oh, yeah. There we when go. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. Class. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which what? they were going. What? They don't Did even they just that. Skip o- Did he just skip <laughs> over the whole like walk on water Pe- thing with the? Uh... Yeah, like Peter walking on water with him, bro. <laughs> it's like a cool detail. See, John's like, don't... you guys have heard this a million times. He's like, he's like, nah. He's like, bro. I wish that was me, dog. <laughs> Like, bro, he got mad. Just kidding. Where's, uh, the like, part, where's the part where it says, like, they were running, and he's like, yeah, but John was faster, or something. Where is that again? Do you know I what I'm talking that. about? Like, no. they're, they're rushing to, like, either see the tomb or, like, go tell people about Jesus. And, like, there's a mention <laughs> that, like, was, oh, but John yeah. reached it before somebody else. Dude, it was so yeah, funny. I can't wait until we get to that. <laughs> they so funny, have bro. to mention that. <laughs> But yeah, they don't even mention too that the uh, the apostles say, "Hey, it's a ghost." Oh yeah, or whatever, and they say, it's "No, it's Jesus." That's yeah, cool. That's fine. All right, so it's the you next. From heaven, yeah. Oh. Manna. Sent from heaven. Say manna. Manna. <laughs> manna. Ah. Hey, oh. ro- hey, put in that clip real quick. <laughs> Classic stunner boy. Classic stunner boy. All right. Um, the bread. Okay, wait. No, no, What? Let's give a little. Co- no, let's give a little context. Mana means bread, bro. Sorry. Oh yeah, mana is like. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mana was uh, in the Old Testament. They had, like rained yeah. mana when um all the the uh, the people were escaping from Egypt as slaves, and Moses let them out. They mm-hmm. like went into the wilderness, didn't have food, so it rained mana. And they it did. The, can we can, can we say it one more time? No. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll run the clip one more time. Classic Stunner yeah. Boy. Classic Stunner Boy. So, um, yeah, that's a... Uh, Old Testament was so cool, though. We still gotta finish that. We're in, like, Leviticus. Alright, enough commentary. Bread from Heaven. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Oh, so they saw that Jesus didn't get in the boat. It's like Jesus walked out to them. What the heck? That's crazy. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Bro, he's a celebrity. They're trying to get him. Yeah, well, it's God. If yeah, they know it's yeah. God, they're going to so look. Cool. It's funny. Okay. When they yeah. found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, sorry, very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill <gasps> of the loaves. They just want more food. Do- <laughs> nah, bro. <bruh. laughs> do not work for the food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, yeah. which the Son of Man will give you. For it is not for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. They said to him, then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, 
This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. That's sick. There you go. Believe in Jesus. That's all you that is do. so cool, though. That's the highlight. The, you, this is the work of God, to even just believe in him. Yeah, that's so that's cool. Awesome. You want to pick up? Uh, yeah. From 30? I'll, yeah, I'll pick up. So they said to him, what signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? As if the food wasn't enough. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, what I'm work bro. are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. Always oh, talk about that. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Wait, so did they think that it was Moses that did that? Yeah, I guess they did. Because, like, because that's the thing. God used Moses as, like, a vessel to do his works, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess they, I mean, whatever. <laughs> but, like, Moses said all the time, he's like, this is God who's doing this. This is God. <laughs> this is God. Yeah, no. like, they don't care. Even faster, all right. Classic, classic, classic. Okay, bro. Sorry. 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and everyone or and anyone who comes to me, um, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son of the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Believe in Jesus. So that's, wait, that is so sick. Um, he dies and ri- resurrects, and now he's promising... When you die, you will also resurrect as Factual. I did. So, oh, what? No, no, no. What so much number are we on? Though. What 41. number? Forty-one. 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 Forty-one gag. If I can, hey, if I can find a clip and post of Jeremy saying that, I will include it. Okay. So. And if you need, if you need a clip, I will supply it to you, bro. Excellent. Hopefully, hopefully, I find it, and if I do, I'll play it right here. Forty-one. Thank you. Oh dog. yeah, thank you, Jeremy means a lot awesome okay on 41 then the jews began to complain about him because he said i am i am the bread that came down from heaven they were saying is not this jesus the son of joseph whose father and mother we know how can he say now i have come down from heaven jesus answered them do not complain among yourselves no one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me and i will raise that person up on the last day it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. So he's saying he has seen the Father. Yep, awesome. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. <laughs> oh, this is the Ow. bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for for the life of the world is in my flesh. So is he saying, like, were Old Testament people just not resurrected? Well, yeah, so he's saying the physical <laughs> bread that the people yeah. ate, which was the bread that rained down from heaven, they they died obviously they they yeah, ate yeah, and right but he, now he's speaking about himself he's not speaking about the bread he rained down as well he's speaking about himself he's saying okay right. i am the living bread you know those people that that ate of the bread that fell down from heaven they died but if you if you eat of me you will live you you will be resurrected on the last day Right. So, so like, were the Old Testament people just not resurrected? I don't know or, if they were. I don't know if they were weird. like put in a spot. Like, there's. Oh my gosh. We, there's like, a, like. There's a. 
Yeah, what if there, there's like a waiting room, bro? Yeah, there was. That's that's the thing. There was because th- there was some sort of um. Don't call me on this, but I'm pretty sure it says that the father or someone, the son or whatever, um, escorted them into heaven, like like Moses and the old prophets and everything. Lord. And they they were literally in. See, theologians say that it was like a uh, uh, a part of hell, like a waiting room in hell. Mm. It wasn't obvious. It wasn't obviously like they weren't tormented, but they were in like uh, the because there's theology about layers and hell and stuff like that. But oh, yeah, yeah. um, but oh, but the they, because you bro. because you know why you know why they think it's hell because they say Abraham's bosom. That's what they say. I don't know. Man, I don't know cr- why. That's so cool. It's, like all those theories about like the the layers and the circles and stuff. Right. Is that so Dante's Inferno is a really famous example. I think I, I think so. So have you read Dante's Inferno, by the way? I've not, but I've heard oh, of dude, it. Oh, we had to we had to go over that in uh, high school. Really cool. But really interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think the Old Testament people back then, before Jesus, um, pre Christ, they, I don't know. I I really don't, don't know, know if they. Know. I don't know if they were like waiting before they they were brought into heaven escorted to heaven yeah. uh, because the, obviously when christ died and was resurrected he opened the gates of heaven for all that right. believe in him you know what i mean so yeah well i don't um, know we'll uh we'll just have to figure that out we'll later. have to we'll have we to gotta, do research on yeah, that yeah we gotta we gotta finish up real quick because we are at a little over 40 42 minutes now yeah so you want to pick us up on 52 yeah, we have like a couple. Pages. Yeah, it's just two more paragraphs, or like three more. Um, where am I? A fifty-two. Fifty-two. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, fifty-two. Yeah. Okay. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, "How can this man give us his flesh to eat?" So Jesus said to them, "Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink and drink his blood, you have no life in you." Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live um, because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died but the one who eats this bread will live forever he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at capernaum so i just want to mention they like jesus mentions this so many times and this is where i think the catholic theology of um we should be attending mass to perceive the body and uh the yeah the body and blood of christ because it's important, it's ritual. Um, he says, "Do this in remembrance of me." I don't know if this is the the part where he's with them. I don't think this is it yet. But he reinforces the idea that, okay, your ancestors that ate the bread that fell from heaven, they died. But this new bread and wine that you are about to eat is it, it's in spirit of me. You're doing this because you believe in me, and you will live. So. That's why it's super important. I think it, it is important because he always says, truly, I tell you, truly, I tell you. And that means basically an oath, right? Yeah. So it, he wouldn't just be saying this so many times because God does it in the Old Testament so many times. He'll, he'll repeat himself. Do you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he'll yeah. like repeat himself. And you know when God repeats something, it must be important. You kind of have to shove it down their throat or they don't really understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not something to just to – because if I mentioned something to you once, you might forget. So they have to keep that in mind that the body and blood are important. Yep. There you go. All right. Is it is it me? It is. Okay. Um. Oh, just shot me all the way back up. Hold on. Scroll down. The words of eternal life. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? 
Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. Judas alert. Yeah. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. <gasps> He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot. For he, though one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Spoiler alert, like, whatever. Yeah. So, so yeah, like, he, he's asking because a lot of people left the room. They said, what you taught about the bread and the, the wine, that it, it's, you know, that, that that's the way to eternal life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, they thought it was difficult. It was a difficult teaching, and they left. And yeah, and then the twelve ultimately stay because they believe, except for one, and that's Judas, the betrayer. <sighs> what are we gonna All do, right. with Judas, man? I don't know, dog. Sorry, I'm scared of Judas. So that was it. That was uh, that was six. Oh yeah, so, we're at seven now. Yeah. So if we keep doing this like three chapters at a time. Uh, this will run us about seven episodes because there are 21 chapters of John. All right. 21. 21. <laughs> 21, can you do something for me? All right. So um, any closing thoughts, bro? I want you to speak your closing thoughts. Do you have any? Well, uh, I think my closing speak thoughts your mind, are, dog. I think my closing thoughts are... Uh, bye, everyone. Bye.